And speaking of learning to be a safer pilot, AOPA's Dave Hirschman got some hands-on safety training. He had a chance to take an upset recovery course in Mojave, California. It's a view pilots don't expect to see from the left seat of a corporate jet. This Sabre liner is in a steep bank at a critically low airspeed and getting close to an aerodynamic stall. In the right seat, Rick Searfoss, a former NASA Space Shuttle commander, hands over the controls. Your controls, fly out of my controls. Searfoss teaches the upset recovery course at Flight Research, a California firm that uses real jets, not simulators, to give professional pilots hands-on experience recovering from unusual attitudes. Not only does the simulator not act like an airplane, but there's no emotion to it. You get upside down in a real airplane, there's emotion to it. You will never forget how to do it. The two or three day courses include a classroom review of accidents caused by loss of aircraft control, as well as high altitude and high speed aerodynamics in situations that can cause inadvertent departures. If you're flying along and you get in an upset condition and you haven't been trained for it, instinctively, most of the time, you will do the wrong thing. To teach pilots to do the right things, Flight Research teaches a universal recovery procedure that uses the acronym UTAP, Unload, Throttle, Ailerons, Pitch. So let's say you find yourself in a, in a business jet and you're slightly on your back, something like that, a wake encounter, something like that, and these things have happened, and you want to recover and you haven't had training, uh, your first skill is going to be a pull. Well, as you and I know, if you pull from right here, what's going to happen? nose is going to come down. So that's the kind of habits that, uh, that we try and train pilots out of. Flight Research uses aircraft with performance similar to the ones their clients fly professionally. To them, it doesn't make sense to use a light aerobatic aircraft. It's like trying to teach someone to drive a Mack truck by training them in a Corvette. Entirely different. The second and optional third instructional flights take place in an Aramaki Impala, a two-seat former military jet that looks nothing like any corporate airplane. My favorite quotes from one of our students is they were pleasantly surprised with the Impala's lack of performance. Uh, so it looks, it looks fast, it's not, uh, it's kind of heavy on the controls and it acts much more like a large aircraft. My final maneuver in the Impala was nothing I ever expected to see in a jet, a tail slide. Let it go, okay, it's gonna go around its back, let it go, let it go. And we got one overshoot and then it's settled in and then just play with the tail slide demonstrates the airplane's inherent stability and eagerness to recover from even extreme upsets. According to flight research, upset recovery training is more important now than ever because of the aviation industry's increasing reliance on automation. It tends to um, whittle away at some of your hand flying skills and that's what we want to do is bring that back up. For the team at Flight Research, it's all about building pilot skills and awareness. Okay, quick roll, quick roll, quick roll. Uh, but one of the most rewarding times is when you get the phone call from a guy and he calls you up and says, hey Gomez, you know, I was flying, uh, I was climbing out behind a 74 one day, I found myself in a wake up set and I remembered your training, I remembered you tap and recovered the airplane and saved people. And that's just, there's just no better feeling in the world to know that you not only added to somebody's training and made them a better professional, but actually helped save lives. Dave Hirschman, AOPA Live. Thanks, Dave. Looks like some fascinating flying. You can learn more about flight research in the March Turbine edition of AOPA Pilot Magazine.